Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to that show of shows, Pigskin Facts, History and News. And right now we are live and direct from my man Greg's house in Centerville. Yeah, man. Hail to the Redskins. This is my partner, Gregory Relliford Jr. Say what's up to the folks, my brother. What's up, everybody? Hail to the Redskins, the DMV Nation. I'm yours truly, Gregory T. Relliford Jr. Here with my bro, Fred Watt. Yes, we sir. are definitely, definitely Redskins fans for life. Yes, sir. We're going to talk about a lot of topics today. We're going to talk about the coaching changes. I even have a list here of all the important dates for the Redskins for 2020. And we're going to talk about free agency and the upcoming draft. And, and uh, bro, what you want to start with? We'll, we'll go with what you want to start with. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? Let's start with the ending of this season. Okay. Going into everything that's been happening so far, as far as like Ron Rivera coming into the DMV now. Yes. You know, the, the yes. hires that he's he's made. That's the culture change we've been asking about. That's yeah. What, you, 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 were, you were telling me, you said, you said, bro, we need a culture change. And Ron Rivera, he's coming in and he's a he's a no-nonsense coach, man. He's, he's, he's hard-nosed. And he's like, look, who rock coming guy? in. Hoorah. I'm you know, coming. like he... The thing I like about Ron Rivera is, if from a player's perspective, a coach like him makes me want to go get it. Like, yeah. even on a losing game, like, is how you lose. And, and still having a leader that makes you feel like, even after a loss, there's still another battle to be one type. Right. As opposed to a coach leader that doesn't really make you feel... Like you're going into a battle. Right. It's just more like, oh, it'll be okay. Well, blah, they're just too generic. This guy is this this <clears throat> coach Rivera is proven. He's um he he inherited a Panthers team in two thousand I think eleven or twelve. And yep. they had a four and twelve record. Um he came in the first year, I think they finished seven and nine. Um the yeah, second, that about right. Yeah, the second year, uh they went no, first year I think was six and ten, then they went to seven and nine. Then they went to twelve and four, and then after that they went to the uh, Super Bowl, and he's won three division titles. He's had a Super Bowl appearance, and this guy is a, co- a player's coach. He cares about the players. He brings yeah. discipline. He brings accountability, and the Redskins have missed this for years. Yeah, yeah, we needed this for a, a long time, man, long time, especially yeah. after the fact. All right, some of the coaches that we've been through, yeah, the players that we've been through. Yeah. The talent that we've had, yeah. and then they turn around and they get injured and things like that. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, this is a good breath of fresh air for the organization. Yes. And it's a breath of fresh air for the culture. Absolutely. It's a breath of fresh air for the fans. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's a breath of fresh air for the players. Yes. A la, let's say, Adrian Peterson interview fairly recently. Yes. Because he kind of briefly stated the difference between having a Coach Rivera uh-huh. and having... Other coaches and whatnot in this fair recent past. Yes. And when you have a veteran like Adrian Peterson that speaks out in this way. Yes. How did how do you think the rest of the locker room is gonna feel? Right. And it's all let's let's be honest. It, it was already written on the wall that at some point, and I hate to go back and start speaking to Jay Gruden because now we're going into a whole new era. Right. But real is real. Right. We went through a whole bunch of just effed up, jacked up situations under yes. Jay Gruden's clock. Right. And it was just a waste of talent and a waste of potential, you know? Yeah, it was. So, so now it's, it's time to see what we really can do. Not saying we're about to go to a Super Bowl all of a sudden. We, right. we don't need to set the expectations so high up. Right. But I feel like going into the 2020 season, our expectations should be okay. We should be more competitive, winning more games. Right. Like, instead of winning, flipping three games, yes. I'll be satisfied if we win – even six. Six games, yeah. Even, even it's, it's seven. An, it's an improvement, yes. Right, because it's now it shows productivity. But I, I, believe, I believe that even in the – I believe that in order to win – or like you said, six six wins for us, that will even be a win in the organization. And I was thinking the other day that if you win in the front office, like if you make the, the, the proper new hires in the front office – then that will translate to the players and that will translate to the field and that will translate to wins. Yeah. And – and the culture change you, you've been talking about, we've been talking about, I believe Ron Rivera has already done that. Because he's come in, he's added uh, uh, staff from the Carolina Panthers. And, you know, people make jokes, say Carolina Redskins or whatever, Washington Panthers. But 
But, <laughs> but, 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 but you're gonna have half the logo. <laughs> have a panther with the uh, half Indian. cat, half Indian. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think I think it's awesome that the owner finally woke up and he said, "You know what? I'm getting Bruce Allen out of here because he was really pulling down the 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 the, the, the fans." And the culture and, and it was the, the organization was just dysfunctional. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, the player the, the game tickets were only four dollars, bro. That's horrible. Yeah. Four dollars? When the when the you got other teams that come to our home and they're louder than we are, that's a problem. When you have the president, Bruce Allen, former, making these dark promises talking about we're we're, we're close, we're getting close. I'm I'm wondering what the hell we're getting close to losing exactly. again. We're getting close. Close to what? Exactly. Didn't he say we're getting close last season? Exactly. And what the hell did we get close to? Losing even more. And he had the nerve to say that our culture was okay. Our culture no, it was wasn't okay. okay. We, no. no, no way our culture was okay. You got a little itty bitty Flintstone <laughs> band aid and you bleeding out the ears, out the eyes, and out the mouth and out the nose, and you putting the little band aid on it and saying it's okay, bro. No. We were bleeding, bro. Right. We were bleeding. Big time. We needed medical attention. Come on, on the medical staff. Losing yeah. somebody as precious as Trent Williams, you got to be on yes. that. I think I'm gonna give. I wanna. I wanna do a grade because I got. I got um, Coach Rivera, um, head coach, and I was looking at an article and it was comparing the, the the other coaches like Dallas. They got Mike McCarthy now, <laughs> and they said that ah! his, yeah, they said his grade was an A, and they gave. Our coach, new coach, Coach Rivera, B plus, and I had a problem with that, bro. I had a I had a problem with that. What, what was your problem with that? My problem with that was Mike McCarthy is is a good coach. He coached the Packers. He went to a Super Bowl, won a Super Bowl. I Agreed. give him that. Agreed. I respect okay. Mike McCarthy. But Dallas is being ch- choke is being in a chokehold by you know who Jerry Jones. Yeah. So as long as Jerry Jones is <laughs> owner. He's going to have a final say-so, and I think that kind of messes up the thing for whoever his coach is because there's going to be some kind of conflict because yeah. Jerry Jones has always got his nose, you know. And everything. And everything. Straight up. Yeah. So I, I gave that a, a, a B, and I give our coach an A+. Plus. That's a home run, Ron Rivera. Yeah. I think he was the best coach in the market. Yeah. We got him. Yeah. 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 I agree. Dan Snyder didn't waste Dan Snyder didn't waste any time. Right. And I I, I applaud him for not either because yeah. when you get a coach like the Ron Rivera's, the Mike Tomlins, even yes. he's not on the market, the, the, uh, even like the Pete Carroll's. Pete Carroll's, yes. Uh, 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 Top uh, what's his name? Andy Reid. Right, yeah, I mean, that's how Andy, Andy Reid. The yeah. respectable type coaches yeah. who even on their losing days still knows what it takes to win. Yes. And be competitive and give the yes. fans at least a, a lot of what they want and the best out of their players and organization. Then you go for that immediately. See, so, those yeah, teams have a great there. culture base, like the, the Patriots, um, the Chiefs, and yeah. the Seahawks. And Dan Snyder went in and he, he did a study and he wanted to know what it was that made these teams winners all the time. What, what was it? And I guess he found that he needed to give up the reins as an owner and let the coach come in, let the coach make decisions and, and, and um, let the coach have the final say so because Dan Snyder is not really a, 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 a football owner per se, I guess. But I'm going to give him an A because he did his homework this time. And yeah. he, he made some really good decisions. Yeah, for he one. did. It took 20 years. 20 <laughs> long years. Wait, damn. 20 years. How long is it going to take? Yeah, but, you know, but Bruce Allen's gone. Ding dong, the witch is dead, the witch is dead. Right. The wicked witch. Get out of here. Ding <laughs> dong, ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> get, in, get him out of here. He's out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Yes, you got to go to I don't even know what are but, you gonna do now? Go to another team? Or? Yeah, but I think I who think, cares really? <laughs> I think he's gonna have a, a huge impact on the players because he's like a he's like a player's coach. He he cares about he cares about about these guys as human beings, not only on the field but outside the field. Yeah. There's not too many coaches that that do that. So yeah. I believe there's gonna be a major transformation in our Redskins, and and I think we're gonna surprise. I'm not, like you said, I'm not saying we're gonna go to the Super Bowl. But we're going to supply prize a lot of folks. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and, bro. And um, our defense, I think we have the pieces. I think it's just a few more pieces that need to be added. But I like that Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera, I like the fact that they've already joined together. And they said, um, Ron Rivera said, hey, that's your defense. And Jack, Jack Del Rio said, 
yes, sir, but I want you to work with me. And Jack Del Rio made a statement in a, in a press conference. He said, when we come out of the locker room, there's not going to be one person against another person on how the defense should run. He said, we're going to all be on the same page. And I love that. I, I mean, I love that camaraderie because we didn't have that. We didn't have that. I mean, you know, going back to Jay Gruden, there was, oh, I don't like this player. Oh, I, I, I you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, my offensive coordinator, I'm, I want you to hold back on what you want to do and I want to run it. I mean, it was just lack of communication. It was confusion. But now these guys are coming in and they're making everything simple. And Jack Del Rio, he said for, oops, sorry, Jack Del Rio for defense, he said he wants to run a 4-3 instead of a 3-4. And the Redskins have been doing a 3-4 for years. Yeah. So and, and we see that it wasn't working. Yeah, it wasn't we working. We kept trying. We kept beating the dead horse with shit that wasn't working. Yeah. Excuse my friends. Yeah. We kept doing 3-4, 3-4, 3-4. You, you can curse. It's not for even, kids. Oh, so, thank okay. you. Fuck yeah. <laughs> right. But no, for serious, I was just inside. But even uh, right or wrong, a lot of people had the opinion that we should be a run team. Right? Yeah. We should yeah. run first. And my opinion yeah. was, why do we have to be? I, right. my, from what I see, a vision of us, I said, why don't we pat... Why don't we pass first, then maybe uh, like screen play, short pass, right, yeah. and then run. Yeah, do it. Um, you know, I think I think um, our new offensive coordinator, uh, by the way, is Scott Turner. He came from um, son of North Turner, familiar name. He came from Carolina, also was under um, Ron Rivera, and he 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 made a, a interesting statement. He says, as offensive coordinator, the way he wants to do it is he wants to play to the player's strengths. And if you follow the tape of or watch the, the college games of um, Dwayne Haskins, he always played out of the shotgun. He was comfortable out of the shotgun. And they did a lot of play action pass at Ohio State. So I think he's going to formulate the offense around him but cater to his strengths. Because a lot of, a lot of offensive coaches sometimes, they'll come in and be like, well, you're going to conform to how I do it, how I do my how my philosophy is or how my system is, and you're just going to have to adapt. But they, they don't take the time to say, oh, well, let me look at Greg's strengths. Let me look at uh, what Greg does best and what he doesn't do. And that's what this guy does. This guy is like an analyzer, and I like that about him because he's like every player that we have on offense, we're going to cater to their strengths. If you're fast, hey, we're going to run you on jet sweeps, so we're going to do – we're going to do, you know, slant patterns and pop you over the middle. But whatever whatever their strengths are. But I like I like what he said because we didn't have that in our offense. Our offense was like vanilla, like run on first down, run on second down. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're third third and long. Obviously, we got to pass. Right. So, I mean. The, <laughs> you were so right. Yeah, so the teams were keying we're on that. We're too obvious. Yeah, we're too obvious. I felt like we were more conservative, not as aggressive as we could, can be, because we yeah. had the, those type of players, Alabama wall, per se. Yeah. And then, yeah, we were just doing too many vanilla plays. Too yeah. obvious. Oh, I know what we're going to do. We're going to run it. Run, run the ball. Oh, oh, even on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, we got somebody on third and 18. Oh, but damn, if they don't run it and still get the first down. Right. Oh, and we get a flag on the play, which we've actually improved on that. Like penalties, yeah. we've actually improved on that. Yeah. But there were times, time after time after time, where we shoot ourselves. We uh, on the offensive side of the ball, either side of the ball. We yeah, do some actual good plays out of the clear blue. Yeah, but then we turn around and have mad flags behind it. Yes, you know, like these yeah. non-disciplined type situations under Jay Gruden's clock from yes. a coach perspective. Yes, you know what I mean. Like, I think uh, I think the the um then also like what they were saying about Coach Rivera. They call him they nickname him Riverboat Ron. Riverboat and they, Ron. And they call him that because he's a he's a risk taker. And um, that was another problem I had because, like, we would have, like, fourth and one and fourth and inches, and we would kick the ball. And I'm like, why not go for it? We don't have anything to lose. There were, yes. There were times um, go figure. where we were fourth and one. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, if I'm on the sidelines, if I'm calling plays, I know you would too because me and you got the same type. Right. Go for it, God damn it. Go for go it. For yeah. It. If yeah. you know it's a play that – you all these plays in the playbook that you rehearse, right, because it's yeah. like choreographed, yeah. like dance moves, right, like yeah. around on Michael Jackson rehearse moves and he yeah. do a great thing. Same with football. It's just more yeah. physical fucking battle. Yeah. We got playbook. It ain't just one play for fourth and one. Right. We got all these plays that can get a third and two – that work. Right. Use that. Right. You got Pete Carroll, Sean Payton, right. uh, uh, my man from uh, from the, uh, the, the Philadelphia Eagles coach, uh, Doug uh, Peterson. Doug Peterson. That yeah. these hoorah guys that go, Mike Tomlin, yes. they know when and when not to go for it on fourth and one. Down. Harbaugh's. Right. 
they both fourth and one. Oh, right. we going for it because right. we know we got plays. Then right. naturally, if it won't fourth and one situation, we'll get it. Sometimes if, those plays we need that. Deter- sometimes those plays determine the outcome of the game. So yeah. if you're not if you're not willing as a coach to 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 go on the line for your team and say, you know what, we're gonna go for it. We need to win this game because if if we don't convert this, we're kicking the ball back to them. We might not get the ball back, so we need to go for it now. I, I like I, I just love his mentality, man, because he's just like a a, a no nonsense, straightforward type of coach, and he's yeah. like, look, this is how we're gonna do it. And he 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 said, look, he said, I'm I'm here to win us a Super Bowl. He said, if I'm not here for that reason, then I'm wrong. I don't need to be coaching. Yeah. So he said oh, yeah. he, he said I believe in me. And I'll bet on me. I said, "Woo!" I right. said, "I like this dude." Right, right. I, I like felt, this I dude. Actually, I watched that press conference, and I oh, was happy. You. I got yeah. off of work. Yeah. Uh, with the one thing in my mind, I can't wait to get home because I know by the time I get home later on, they show the press conference. Right. And I was anxious to watch that shit, man. I was right. like, "Yes," because you can just tell by how Ron Rivera even carries himself. Yeah. Even with, with the Panthers, he's a more stand up, stand up, yeah, firm, solid guy. Right. And he, you can just tell by his demeanor, he's not the type that's just gonna take everything from a higher up. Like, I'm just right. going to be a puppet master for you. Everything you say goes. Right. Like, right. we don't want that. We right. want somebody that's going to give us the, the 110%. I like I like the fact of being also, a Redskin. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been interrupted. It's okay. I like the fact also that he did bring people along with him that he's used to working with, that, that know him. Yeah. And I feel like our coaching regime before that, we didn't have that. It was Gruden over here, Manuski over here. You know, they weren't, it's like they weren't on the same page, but these guys coming in are already like, already like gelling themselves together. And they're like, look, we're going to work together and we're going to be on one page. And, I, and I'm like, man, I'm loving this. I'm just loving Rob it. Ryan. Is he going to? Rob Ryan is gone, bro. I hate to say it. You know, Rob, Rob Ryan, Ryan is a good gone. old guy. But, Rob, uh, matter of fact, sometimes being good old guys or like the Rex Ryan type guys, sometimes they don't cut it, man. Since you asked that, Rob Ryan was replaced by Steve Russ, who was the new uh, inside and outside <laughs> linebacker so, coach. So guys are doing their best, collecting the check. Yes. We just don't, we we just all right. Yes. Who? Hey, let's go have fun, guys. Yes. Let's have a bullshit ass practice. Yes. And and that's what you get. That's so, what you get. Sorry, guys. I yes. like the, I like Rob Ryan. Yeah. Even his brother Rex Ryan. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I even like Jay Gruden as right. a person. Right. Just as coaches and them. Right. Go somewhere else, cause we don't want you. Sorry, but, <laughs> sorry. sorry, but we're moving on from Rip Van Winkle. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, go to the chocolate factory or some crap. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you uh, in the DMV. I wanted to. I go wanted to. The to I wanted to tell you a fact that I was telling you a few minutes ago before we taped that. Um, Jack Del Rio, his reputation as a defensive coach, and I'm like really happy about this too because, you know, that history repeats itself. And in 2002, the Carolina Panthers hired Jack Del Rio as their defensive coordinator. And they, I know that. they happened, yeah, and, and that year, just like us, they happened to have the number two pick in the draft. Right. And they drafted Julius Peppers. You remember him. Right, Julius Peppers had that hot run. He was hot. And he was a, he was a, 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 what, six-time pro bowler? Even on Madden, when I had him on my team on Madden, I was like, yes! He was, right. a, he was a monster. Yeah. They they actually that year they finished second in total defense. Ten years later, 2012, the Denver Broncos hired Jack Del Rio, defensive coordinator. They also had the number two pick in the draft, and number two that they picked was Von Miller, Super Bowl 50 MVP. Von Three Miller definitely going to the Hall of Fame one day. They were number one in defense that year as they beat they beat Carolina. And here it is, eight years later, 2020. We have the number two pick in the draft, and we hired Jack Del Rio. And, bro, history's going to repeat itself. And I believe I, it's a no-brainer. I think we should get Chase Young. All right, now, all right, now for me, right, because I've been uh-huh. kind of out the loop a little bit. Okay. All right, I know I've heard the name Chase Young. Yeah. But I don't know what's, what's his story. Chase Young is, is uh, he's, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a uh, what is that, defensive end from Ohio State. Okay. Um. He played up behind Nick Bosa. You know Nick the Bosa, the Bosa brothers. brothers. You know Nick Bosa this year bolstered the 49ers defense. They're, they're yeah. number one in defense. Yeah, they doing some good. They doing some damage. They said this guy is more athletic than Nick Bosa. Oh. Chase Young had defense. He had, he had 16.5 sacks this year. Damn. 
He he is faster. How many is that per he, he he is faster than Bosa. And how much does he weigh? He, he did that. He did that, he did that in only um, ten games, bro, because he missed two games this year. Right, sixteen sacks. That's impressive. Yeah, um, he's fa- he's fast off the, off the edge, and it takes like two or three blockers just just to, just to slow him down. That's crazy. That's how bad he is. And uh, if we get if we draft him, we already have Montez Sweat on one side. I don't I don't know if we're gonna keep Ryan Kerrigan. I think we should is, is to have our depth. Right. We better think, not get rid of Ryan I, Kerrigan. I think we need our depth. He he wants to stay. He's got to stay. Yeah, he's got to stay. But if you put Montez Sweat, and you already know Montez runs a four four. He's fast. Chase Young is is probably maybe a tad maybe four 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 five maybe that he runs, but he's more powerful than 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 Montez Sweat. He literally lifts linemen off their feet and, and pushes them into the quarterback, gets to the quarterback. This guy's a monster. They call him the Predator. Damn. Okay, they, so they he's call, a of that name. Bro, they call him the Predator. So, so if, is it like a, a certainty that we might we'll end up getting him? Uh, oh, no, no, speculation, I guess, because it's drafting. There, there is a, a, a big speculation because there's a lot of teams that are going to probably want to try to trade up. But I think if we're smart – we already got we already got um, Dwayne Haskins for our offense, a key piece. I, I say we go ahead and get the best player available on defense and bolster the defense, because you got you got uh, Jonathan Allen, Matt Ioannidis, uh, Deron Payne on the line, and and bro, we, have, we have one of the best lines I believe, defensive lines up and coming in the league. We're gonna be and they're still young. They're still, still young. Our defense, we haven't even talked about potential yet. Because yeah. of the bull sauce we've been dealing with. Right. The bull sauce we've been dealing with hasn't even brought the best. And been, and now you know, we have one of the best def, uh, uh, they defensive for Alabama. coordinators. They're not used yeah. to losing. I know right. that much. I haven't been up in my college, but I do know some shit. Right. Some shit that I do know is that Alabama's right. roll tight. Like, and they're not used to losing. So when you get them over here in the pros for the Redskins, and we mm-hmm. losing like we have, right. they're hurting. They're hungry Jack, to win. Jack Del Rio said, he he he, fit, he fills the players because they felt like they had a disappointing run. Yeah, but we got the right coach now, and he's gonna come in and he's gonna play these guys to their strength. I can't wait, man. And and I he, can't wait. To see he said season. he said he um Ron Rivera said we're gonna stop the run on our way to the quarterback. Oh my gosh! Stop. The we're going to stop the run on our way to the court. Oh, no, Meaning, we're going to stuff the running backs, and then we're going to sack the shit <laughs> that's, out of all, all of their quarterbacks. That's some stuffing. I like, I like, I like, I like, the, I like those word the way he worded that. We're going to stop the run on the way to the freaking quarterback. Yeah, that's 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 a wall. Yeah, that's like a, a, a Ford moving wall. So I think <laughs> I think I think our defense is going to be renovated. Um, I think. Do you think we should get rid of Josh Norman? How do you feel about that? Oh, all right. So there's a couple of ways that I was thinking about this, right? Because I love Josh Norman. Yeah. If if for some reason we would have still kept Jay Gruden, even like we'll see how he does one more year type thing, sign him one contract or two, then I would have said, and, and still kept Minuski. Yeah. Then I would have said get rid of get rid of Josh Norman because yeah. maybe he would be better fit. With another team that can really bring the best out of him. Yeah. But now that we've gotten rid of some rotten fish. Yes. Now I actually feel like we should keep Josh Norman. Because now he's yeah. going to be under someone who he actually knows. And someone that, that, that knows to play him to his strengths. I think I think the thing with Josh Norman, I don't think he's a bad player. I think he just lost his confidence. Because he was put in the defense... Where he was asked to do the things that he didn't wasn't do at, at Carolina, that right, yes. that he wasn't used to. Come so, on, man! I, How you gonna have Josh Norman playing on the wrong side <laughs> that he's not used to playing on? Exactly. I mean, what game was? I'm like, why? Why do we not have Josh Norman on the number one fucking receiver? Josh Norman. What? Josh Norman was known for coming up to the line and jamming the receiver, and and pretty much when you jam a receiver, you throw you throw the the route of the quarterback off. Yeah, the quarterback, the timing between the quarterback and the, and the wide out. We want that Josh Norman yeah. that rolls up on someone and punches the ball out, yeah. punches the ball out to set up a fumble. Right. And then the Josh Norman that brings out that arrow like he's Batman. Right. I miss the aggressive Josh Norman, the the one where he was fighting Odell Beckham. I mean, not Dunbar, so much that he was fighting. Yes. Who stepped up? We got a short. We got a shut down corner. I think. Um, 
I know you didn't see the games, but they they moved Fabian Monroe from the slot to the to the outside corner, and bro, he did awesome. Did it really? He played the slot is hard to play, the nickel. Yeah. But when they moved when they moved him to the to the other outside corner, he he played lights out, bro. Um, check out the the Carolina game on on and because he that game they put him on the outside. He had uh I think two interceptions in that game. I think the the two weeks that they put him in, yeah. he had like two interceptions. Oh, uh, yeah. Watch videotape, boys. Yeah. Watch some videotape. Landon, all Landon, Co- Landon Collins, I love him. I think they 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 should play to his strengths to have him play down in the box because he can tackle and he can shut down the run. And I think we need to we need to draft or get a, 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 a another safety in either free agency or. Maybe somebody that could come in and start that will compliment him. That's good at covering. Yeah. Because Landon Collins is not great covering, but down in the box and coming against the run, he's awesome. Yeah. But we need we need another safety that could like play over the top. That's good at that's fast and that's good at covering, like a ball hawk. Yes. Yeah. You know this might be off a little bit, but wasn't DJ Swearinger a safety? DJ Swearinger was that kind of safety that we had. <laughs> and what did we do? And what did we do? He he spoke the truth. He said he well, the said the watch and guess who's not here either. Yep. I exactly. honestly if there I would I would bring try to bring DJ Spranger back because the Cardinals released him. He had a Pro Bowl calendar year. I think we need to bring him back. And because minuski has gone, so I think he would probably agree to come back if we could talk to him. But he he was he was lights out, bro. He had four or five interceptions. I, what I, I, I'd I mean, be calling DJ Stranger real quick. Oh man, hey DJ, what you doing? I, I heard the Arizona Cardinals let you go, and right now you're not really playing for no team, and you yes. still hungry to get back. Welcome back to the DMV because we yes. really never wanted you gone. We wanted somebody else gone. Exactly. Come on back home, my friend. Exactly. Boom. So I think now that they clean house, and I think we need we just. Oh, I would love to get Trent back. Yo, yes. I would I, love to get what? Trent back because that would help open up so much our run game. Yes. Passing game. Yes. Because they're trying to develop the way, yes. develop the way he has in the yes. pocket and things like that. Yeah, we need oh, we need him at left. Ta- what was he left tackle? Is it left tackle? Yeah, I think it was left left. I think he's left tackle. Because uh, Eric yeah. Fla- Eric Flowers took yeah. Eric Flowers surprised me, bro. Yeah. Eric Flowers had a good year. I I was shocked. You're right. Remember, because he was a bust. He had number one draft pick. And see, he was a bust in New see, York. They came in and they played him to his strengths at, at that position, and that's why he flourished. And see, that's a lesson for the coaches. Play your players to their strengths. Right. Don't play. Don't plug them into a system that you think that they should be in. P- find out who they are as a player, what they, what they do best and what they don't do, and, and and take advantage of of their talent or what they do best. Yep. And this coaching staff that we have, they get it. They get it. The light bulb is on finally at Redskin Park. Finally. The, the light, <laughs> finally. Um. So, I wanted to um. Go over some uh, dates, if you don't mind. It's uh, it's like some dates for the Redskins real quick. Yes, sir. Um, February 24th, the NFL Combine begins. Oh, big and, day right there. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of scouts there looking. So we'll get to see Chase Young and what he does and if we should draft him or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, February 25th, uh, franchise tag period opens. It's the first day for clubs to designate franchise players. Do we have any Ooh. franchise players that you know of as far as like, who, who uh, might end up leaving? Because usually franchise up... player is usually a quarterback, but we don't have a, a franchise player designated as a quarterback. Or, right. Not that I know of. Anyway. I'm looking at the roster. I don't I don't know right offhand. I, I was yeah. actually thinking of, a, oh, no, I'm trying to scroll up and down with, the roster. Would Ryan me. Kerrigan qualify? Because he's been, he's been a long-time oh, Redskin. Man. Would he qualify as a franchise player? Or, but I've never heard of – Anything about putting a franchise tag on him or anything? Right, me neither. I mean, I, mean, I want to keep. I want to keep Ryan. I, I love Ryan. For some reason, bro, I honestly feel that Ryan Kerrigan is definitely not leaving. Yeah, I, I don't I think don't, he is yeah. either. Because look at the, look at the depth of the linebackers we got. We got we got Ryan Kerrigan. We got Ruben Foster who's going to come back. Ruben Foster, forgot about him. Ruben That's Foster. Right, we got Ruben Foster, man. We got Sean Dion Hamilton, another good uh, linebacker. Um, Cole Holcomb, the rookie, he did awesome this year. Holcomb, I heard that name. He was second in the team in tackles. Um, March March 18th, free agency opens, so clubs can sign free agents beginning at 4 p.m. on the 18th. I wonder what we're going to do. 
in, in, a free, um, in a free agent market. I think I don't think Jordan Reed is coming back. I think maybe his career uh, might be over because of the concussion. Yeah, man, I feel so bad for him. But the, but there but there's we need a tight end. There's tight ends. There's there's a guy named uh, Franco, but. Uh, Aaron, I think I don't know if his name is Aaron Hooper or Ryan Hooper. Yeah. He's a tight end from from the Falcons, and he's good, bro. He's a good blocker. And he's a great receiver. Yeah. Um, he's a Travis Kelsey type. You know Travis Kelsey, right? Uh, Chiefs. Yep. He, yep. He's yep. kind of like him. So we need we need somebody that can not only I'm not I'm not sold on Jeremy Sprinkle, bro. I'm not. Yeah. Me neither. That's why I'm like Sprinkle, but S- Sprinkle he, he 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 sprinkles all right. He he sprinkles. Fumbles out of his hands. And I'm even looking at the roster now. I'm just running, looking up. All right, so Vernon Davis. Are we going to keep Vernon Davis? I don't know. Uh, uh, who the hell is Jerome Cunningham? He I've has never a heard knee, of him. Knee injury. Tight end. Uh, hell, Henges? Why you got? No idea. He plays, but he's not. Yeah. He's not Pro Bowl caliber type, or he's not. Jordan Reed concussion. Yeah, uh, we, Jeremy Sprinkle, we just mentioned. Hell, I'd I'd, 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 I'd ask Chris Cooley to come back out of retirement. Hell. These are all our tight ends that we have, and none of these tight ends stand out to me. Chris Cooley, please come back. Right. Chris Cooley, we'll take you back. Um, But that's it. Uh, March 29th, annual NFL owners meetings. That's in Palm Beach, Florida. April 6th, the off-season workouts begin. It says teams with a new hired head coach can start off-season workout programs. So April 6th. You already know that Ron Rivera and company, they're going to get the, they're going to roll their sleeves up. And get oh, yeah. Work. And I can already just finish. Just by the conference, I feel like he's already ready to just. Yeah. He's probably already started. He, he he's made probably a, already started. He made a funny statement. He said he's glad he got the coach and hire because he said he was tired of being at home, getting up and doing dishes. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, he's ready to go to work. Um, Jack Del Rio said he's ready to go to work. Um, April 23rd is the NFL draft. Uh, takes place in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. We have the second pick. We don't have a we we don't have we have second second pick in the first round. Second round we don't have a pick. So if we don't if Trent Williams decides not to to come back to the Redskins, they most likely might trade him, and we might uh, I don't know get, get a second round pick. I, I I don't know I don't know how that's gonna work, right? But they're I believe Kyle Smith because Kyle Smith does it. By the way, he got. Promoted to vice president of player personnel, he did a ex- he's done an excellent job in the draft the last three years. And this guy now he he runs it all this position. So I think this year is going to be an even greater draft as far as what we need because we need a tight end. Um, yeah, big time. We definitely need tight end. Man. We, need, we need help on the O line to bolster the O line. Yeah. Uh, what else do we need? We need another receiver to probably complement Terry McLaurin. Another true. Yeah, Too wide out. Yeah, we, receiver. Uh, and I'm, I'm still think thinking about what do you think we need. Um, I still kind of have my eye out on a quarterback position. Okay. Because, all right, let's say for example, in a scenario, say if Dwayne Haskins got hurt, yeah, who's going to be the backup quarterback? Right. Because because right. because Colt McCoy most likely is going to be gone, and we've had like we've always had a rotation pretty much of three quarterbacks. Right. So we're not we're like down to two. And who like would be the, the third string? Alex. You know what I mean? Right. If you have Let's say Case Keenum, perhaps right, right. behind. I don't think he's going to come back. I don't. Case 